Minister, you Anushka, said shortages yes. are all about a transition to a higher wage economy, but increasingly there, were, there are worries about inflation. Whatever the justification for the policies, on a human level, are you worried about the pain of higher prices, higher national insurance and lower universal credit? I think what you're seeing in the UK at the moment and uh, over the last year or so, you've seen uh, for the first time in more than uh, a decade, you're seeing increases in wages, which is what we want to see. And uh, when you talk about uh, some of the, the supply chain issues, that's really a function of the, the, the world economy, the, particularly the UK economy, coming back to life after COVID, sucking in gas in particular, there's massive demand for that in, in Asia. Uh, there's a shortage of, of lorry drivers actually uh, around the world, in, from Poland to the United States, even in China, they're short of, uh, of lorry drivers. And uh, what we want to see is a, a high wage, high skill economy, uh, where we invest in people, invest in fantastic infrastructure like this behind me, and, and, and drive high productivity growth. That's the, that's the model we should be going for. But are you worried about the pain? And aren't you really blaming business for all of this? I think that what we're seeing is the uh, recovery of the economy. We've now got the fastest growing economy in the G7. And uh, I think that you've, you've got unemployment way, way lower than people forecast. Uh, you've got jobs being created the whole time. And what we want to see uh, are high wage, high wage, uh, high skilled jobs. And I think business is doing a fantastic job of uh, now of investing in apprentices, of investing in, in skills. And that's the way to go for the UK. Uh, we, we, and on things like the road haulage industry, that the thing to do is to make the job more attractive, invest in the truck stops and, 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 and invest in higher wages as well. Yes, it is. By yes. 2035. Does that mean you're saying there will be no new coal and no new oil and gas from now? What I'm saying is that we can do for our entire energy production by 2035 what we're doing with uh, internal combustion engine vehicles uh, by 2030. So from, from 2030, uh, you won't be able to buy any more a new hydrocarbon fueled uh, internal combustion engine uh, car. Uh, and we're going to move to either to EVs or to vehicles powered by hydrogen or, or clean, power, clean power of one kind or another. And that will make a huge difference to uh, our, our CO2 output, to controlling climate change, to the planet. But it will also put the UK at the forefront of this amazing new industry of, of clean vehicles. And what we're also saying is that by 2035, looking at the progress that we're making uh, in wind power, where we lead the world now in offshore wind, uh, looking at what we can do with other renewable sources, carbon capture and, uh, and storage, uh, with, with, with hydrogen potentially, we think we can get to uh, complete clean energy production by 2035. Now, the advantage of that, to go back to your earlier question, Anushka, is that it will mean that for, for the first time, the UK is not dependent on hydrocarbons coming from overseas with all the vagaries in hydrocarbon prices and the risks that poses uh, for people's pockets and, and for the consumer. We'll be, we'll, be, we'll be reliant on our own clean power generation, which will, be, which will help us also to keep costs down. Prime Minister, yesterday you told us that the most important thing we needed to do was trust the police. We've woken up today and another serving police officer has been charged with rape. Women are rightly terrified. Why won't you make it explicit in the policing bill that agencies and authorities must treat domestic abuse and sexual violence as a violent crime? First of all, on the case that you mentioned, Anushka, it, it's an ongoing case. Uh, somebody has been charged. I can't comment on the detail of that, and uh, that will clearly have to go through. But what we can certainly conclude from the Wayne Cousins case uh, and what happened there is that there is a massive job of work to do to give women the confidence that they need. And, uh, and I, I want to be clear, I believe that people should be confident in the police. I think that police officers, men and women up and down the country will be absolutely sickened by what has happened. And, and, and they, and they uh, will be doing everything they can. And I know they do everything they can to help and to reassure the public. So I, it is vital that the public trust the police. But what we need to do is do some things to make the streets safer. And we're investing massively in, uh, in CCTV and street lighting and, and, uh, and those sorts of things. But also make sure that we change the culture of policing. And your point is a very good one. The, the 
police officers need to handle these cases properly, to take them seriously. And I want to see a much shorter time between uh, a reporting of a crime, an arrest, between an arrest and a prosecution, and a prosecution and a conviction. We've got to contract all that. We've also got to recruit many more female police officers. It's happening in the Met. Up to 40% now of new recruits are female. It should happen around the country. And finally, are you concerned your party isn't doing enough to vent? Who is giving donations to you? I see that uh, story again, uh, today, but all I can say on that one is that all these donations are, are vetted in the, in the normal way in accordance with rules that were actually set up under, under the Labour government. So uh, we, we vet them the whole time. Thank you. Thank you.